guys welcome back to another video now today i'm going to be going over a very popular subject at the moment which is var and handballs now unlike most people i'm not going to be going on about how bad var is and stuff like that because you've heard that a million times so i'm going to be going over some other things like how players are going to have to adapt this season and maybe some of the positives even if they're not massive positives that var can bring to us now when it comes to the people which have made the decision with the new VAR rule and handball, it's not UEFA, it's not FIFA, it's actually a board called the IFAB, which stands for the International Football Association Board. They're known to be quite stern and it's unlikely we're going to see a change during this season in terms of their ruling of the Premier League, but we will see maybe next season there'll be quite a lot of changes, I imagine there will be. Now another thing which is going to be a nightmare for defenders this season is their positioning. You know, it's going to be a question of sticking or twisting. Do they decide to change their whole education of being a defender and change their postures when it comes to defending and heading a ball? I think it might have to be because when we see some decisions being given this season, defenders not knowing at all, in fairness, where their hands are and suddenly the next thing they know, the ball's just slightly brushed their hand and it's enough to give away a penalty. You know, this is something which is going to be a very big problem and I think it's just going to keep occurring unless defenders try and learn a new way to defend this season i think it'll be the same for headers as well you could possibly see defenders jumping with their arms tucked in you know as if like a pencil jump when it comes to swimming i think another thing to remember as well is that as much as it may seem annoying that the referee is giving these decisions it's actually nothing that they can do about it because they don't make the rules they just have to follow them and if they don't follow the rules in terms of not giving penalties for these decisions then they could lose their bonuses they could get demoted to lower divisions and miss out on bigger opportunities in the future, uh, such as maybe refereeing Champions League or World Cup games. Now, moving on to the positives this could bring, I think it could make it a more entertaining season. When we look at football posts, lockdown, I haven't said the game's been boring, but we can definitely admit that the no fan atmosphere has played its part, especially at the start. We have got used to it, don't get me wrong. I could maybe see one of the reasons why they see that this rule being beneficial is that the trajectory for more penalties has gone up from 92 penalties last season to 292 this season meaning we're going to get a lot more goals and maybe that's what they think to help bring the interest back to football so maybe they see having more penalties equally more goals to bring more people back to watching football this season now this is a quite mind-blowing stat after game week three we've already seen a quarter of all penalties that were given for handballs from the previous season now kind of carrying on with the atmosphere now you could also argue that maybe to make the games more exciting as well when a team tries to sit back and just settle for a nil nil draw it makes it harder to do so now because if you have 11 men behind the ball and you're getting constant crosses inside the box then it's bound to hit you on the hand at some point and whether that's the right or wrong thing to happen it's going to mean more goals it's going to mean a more exciting game which in some respects is what everyone wants except the team that are trying to get their point now back at my point once again, the crowd makes a big difference in terms of how a game can go. If both sets of crowds are absolutely pushing the teams to the limits to get them to get that goal, it can go for a high scoring game a lot of the time. So maybe they see the best substitute for that to make the handball rule a lot stricter so there's a lot more goals and games. And then lastly, it's just that these things even themselves out. I mean, me being a Sheffield United fan, I saw it both ways. We had a very, very harsh offside done against us when we played Spurs earlier on in the season where Lindstrom was the toenail offside and it disallowed our goal off to be reviewed for about five minutes. And then in the home game, we saw the Harry Kane goal get disallowed because Lucas Moura was pushed by all of our players and handballed it and pushed it onto Kane. Instead of Spurs getting a free kick, we got given a free kick for a handball. So it's quite incredible, some of these decisions, but at the same time, they do even themselves out. It may not be what we want, but it will just be what we we'll have to get used to for a year. And then till next season, and I guess we'll see some more improved rules. It does make me scratch my head a bit that you have a whole year to think about it. And after last year, it received so much criticism, yet it seems to be even worse than before. Right, guys, that about finishes the video. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave in the comments what you think about VAR and the new handball rule. It's definitely going to make the game more exciting. The problem is, is it going to be fair? Anyway, guys, until next time, take it easy.